Why do moves such as EAT's ranking factor still come up? Why do engineers expect SEOs to prove themselves before they can trust them? Why can't SEOs say, I don't know, when they don't know? Why is it depends always the answer? How can developers be better partners for SEOs? How can SEOs be better partners for engineers? Hello and welcome out there. I'm so excited to have you all back here for another episode of SEOs and Developers. Today with me is Jan Matthews, who is an SEO at uh, GitHub, which is a company that is dear and near to my heart as a developer and a developer advocate. Um, and she is known by the handle SEO Goddess, which I think is an amazing name. And I wish there would be more cool titles like that out there. And I'm here with Martin. The first time we met was over our crazy hair. We both had purple and pink hair, and now we're back to normal. <laughs> you know, there's times for everything, and I think in wild times like these, uh, it's a good thing to come back to normal hair, at least, if normality can't be uh, achieved elsewhere. Jen, I'm super, super excited to actually have you here uh, today with me, and I want to discuss something that I find very intriguing when it comes to SEOs and developers working together. I want to hear your perspective because you work in such an engineering driven organization that you must have come across this as well. Um, the thing that I am finding very interesting is that it sometimes seems, or I have the impression, SEOs and developers are sometimes speaking completely different languages. And I don't mean like German versus English versus Russian. I mean, even if we're speaking the same natural language, we, we seem to be not on the same wavelength. Is that something that you have experienced in your career? And how is that at GitHub? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think GitHub just as much as any place else. I mean, we're all, it's a company that's run by product managers, content writers, marketers, and of course, engineers, just like any other company does. Um, and our engineers are just as bright as they are at any other company. But yeah, I think the language definitely, um, you know, speaking to engineers is just a completely different thing. And a lot of SEOs today aren't as technical, technically savvy as I think that they should be when they're talking to engineers. And I think there's a gap in that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I, I think the, yeah, I, I see your point, but I don't think necessarily that every SEO has to be as tech savvy because I mean, that's what the engineers bring to the table, right? They, they are the tech savvy ones. They, they can help you with that. But I, I have the feeling like sometimes it's so bizarre that when you as an engineer are working on something on a software product and then SEO comes in and they tell you stories that feel like from a fairy tale and it's stuff like, oh, EAT is a ranking factor that just keeps sticking around or uh, stuff like, oh my God, we have multiple URLs pointing to the same content. This is going to get us a penalty and things like this. like. Why does this keep sticking around and why can't they just move on and, and be more, I don't, I don't want to say honest, but like more realistic about the, the importance of these things and also how certain they are about certain things. Yeah, I think that um, it's tough for engineers to not think of SEO as a bunch of smoke and mirrors. I mean, I've been told that statement a million times. <laughs> Uh, engineers want concrete evidence. If I do X, then Y will happen. When it comes to SEO, we never know, right? Like unless Google gives us the actual, you know, sauce, the recipe to the sauce, you know, we can't decipher it. And so when we make decisions, a lot of times, especially on my end, I'm doing this for 20 years. My best guess is my best guess. I basically could say if I do this, in the past, this is what's happened. I can't guarantee that's going to happen. And so everything is always test and learn, which is the only way I can get the language to 
kind of resonate with engineers is that test and learn. Like, let's try this. We'll work together. Let's see if it works. And if it doesn't, then let's try something else and just keep doing that. Yes. And this is at the core. Yeah, but that you say that as if that would be a normal mode of operations and, and that would be the normal thing. Because I think what you just said is amazing because it just realized how similar, again, how similar SEOs and developers are in the circumstances that they work in. Because you say like, oh yeah, you know, the, the, the developers want to know like the, the real thing and like hard facts. But the reality is in engineering, and software engineering specifically, we often also don't know. And oftentimes we don't even know what we don't know. And then we just have to, as you say, test and learn. We have to try things out, we have to experiment. But the, the thing that I find strange, and I think that's causing friction as well, is that an engineer, when they don't know something, it's like, hey, can you build me this thing? They have never built something like that before. They'd be like, I don't know. But, you know, we can build a prototype and we can try things out. And then if we figure it out, then we can make that production ready. That's a thing that we can do. And that's a very normal thing. So like saying, I don't know, let's find out. Or I don't know, I'll have to check. Or I don't know, I have to do some research. Is a perfectly reasonable thing to do for, I think, both SEOs and developers. And yet, in my career, I have mostly heard engineers or developers say that. But SEOs seem to be unwilling to admit that they don't know something. Yeah, that's true. And I think, you know, we're constantly, I mean, throughout my career, I've always been questioned. Every time I start with a new company, I'm constantly questioned. It's that smoke and mirrors, right? It's, you know, I say something will happen if we do this thing. You know, we'll get on, you know, of course, I can never guarantee first position, right? But I'm like, let's try it. Let's try at least for the first page. And they're sitting there going, you know, Google is a, we have no control over this, right? Like you have no control, you don't know. And so it's hard to convince people to try to to do that thing and, and get that result. And that's where we get into that test and learn. And SEOs are constantly questioned, constantly, right? So it gets to a point where, we almost kind of get on the defensive where when we're, yeah, so when we're asked a question or how is this going to work or if we do this thing, what's the result going to be? It's hard for us to say, I don't know, just for that reason, right? Because we're constantly under scrutiny or constantly being questioned. But what I usually, so what I usually tell other SEOs is say, it's okay to say, I don't know because they're going to say, I don't know, too, sometimes, right? So everybody is going to use the word test and learn, right? Let's try this out. Let's work together as a partner. Let's try it out. Let's test it. Um, and then let's see what happens. And when we do launch things and they say, how come it's not working? Instead of us digging in and trying to understand which algorithm is not letting us rank, right? Like, it's OK to say, I don't know. <laughs> And let's try something else and move on. But it is, it's very difficult for SEOs because we are constantly under scrutiny. Under scrutiny from whom? Is it developers questioning your expertise? Or is it like someone else in the organization questioning your expertise? Yeah, pretty much the whole organization runs into it, you know, because it's, you know, when you're asking content writers to put a keyword in the header and keyword in the H2 and a keyword in the body, and they're like, why do I have to use this word? It doesn't make sense in the copy I'm writing. And it's like, well, if you don't use this word and then they say, you know, then it won't show up because Google won't find it. And then they say, well, it doesn't fit with the narrative. And you're like, well, but this is what people are searching so it becomes this conversation and they're, they, you know, it, this back and forth to the point where they're like, I don't know if I believe this, right? And then you just have to, that test and learn. It's like, well, let's just put this one keyword in the body somewhere and cross our fingers, it works. And if it does, then it's like, look what you did. <laughs> Interesting, yeah. Uh, yeah. 
So it's the, oh my God. Okay, so yeah, then it's no wonder that you're pretty much like always on the defensive if everyone yeah. kind of fights and, and, and scrutinizes Everybody. you. And, okay. Yeah, but even leadership, then, you know, you even get oh, it from yeah. leadership. Yeah, but then yeah. maybe developers can actually probably be there, your allies, because they should, and I say should because I know there's lots of different developers out there, uh, developers should understand that I don't know is a reasonable statement, especially if you then follow up with let's test and learn. Um, that should be on their wavelength. And then maybe you have like at least someone backing you up, even if it's not the content side. I think having the technical side on, on your side as well uh, is probably a good thing. But then speaking of becoming allies, what could the engineering side, what could developers do to, to help SEOs, you know, get, get over that friction, get over that scrutiny? I think definitely helping you with tests and learn. So, so being open in, in this dialogue on their end as well and being open to try things out with you and other SEOs. Um, but what else? Is there something that you would say like developers could do to make SEOs' lives easier? I think it's kind of a back and forth, right? I mean, I think it's how engineers can best make SEOs uh, or be best advocates for SEOs is, um, I mean, I hate to say it, but just make the changes, right, that are asked, I think, <laughs> to be blunt, as I'm known for. Um, you know, an SEO will say, hey, but it's also the other side of it. Like SEOs need to understand that what we're asking sometimes aren't super easy to do. Like what we think might be a simple, like let's say there's a few redirects that are happening in the footer, right? Of a of the entire website. And we're like, just fix this one link, right? Like it's just have it point to the main one and stop this, you know, like maybe it's a 302 because somebody thought it was a part, you know, temporary and no, 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 we need to make it permanent. So even just having that conversation, you know, SEOs were like, it's just one link. But from an engineer perspective, it's like a whole going to figure out where the programming is that makes it create the footer and where it, it's, it's much more complex than just fixing one little link. And so I think, you know, engineers, I think where that partnership comes in is that engineers need to understand that we're not just asking for simple little fixes just because we feel like it, right? There's a method to our madness, as I say often to everyone I talk to. Um, and I also, there's always a method to my madness. And the other one is um, it's a small part to a bigger part of the problem, right? And so little time, when you add up, you know, one little fix is not that big a deal, like one little redirect. But when you have, let's say, um, a million pages and... 850 some thousand of them are all redirects. That's not a good thing. And so you want to clean those up as much as possible. And so that's why I say, yeah, this one little thing isn't a problem, but you got to do five of them because they're creating 100, you know, 850 some thousand redirects. And once they see that, and so I think, yeah, I think it's kind of both sides of it. If engineers understand that when we're asking for a simple fix, a lot of times it's not just one simple fix. It's you know, just kind of a conglomerate of a, a bunch of things. And there's a reason more often than not why we're asking for it. So, yeah. And then there's like this, this quadrant situation. It's like low impact, low effort, high impact, the high, uh, high impact, higher effort uh, is probably high impact, high effort is like the tricky ones. High impact, low effort is where it's like the low hanging fruit that you want. And then there's like high effort, low impact. That's the ones you want to avoid. And I think understanding where, where things are in these quadrants with developers is probably also helping SEOs figure out when to suggest what. Right, exactly. Yeah, and I actually, uh, my SEOs that have worked for me in the past, I have taught them actually how to do that low impact, you know, the impact versus effort. And when you have fixes, you know, make sure you put that rating in there or talk to your engineers that you work with. And that helps them develop a partnership as well with the engineers. And 
Um, and then we can kind of gauge what needs to get done. That's really cool. That's yeah. really nice. And I, I think if we look at the working relationship between SEOs and developers, as you said, it needs to be a dialogue. It needs to be a, a two-way conversation. And we can both learn from each other, I guess. Would make our lives easier, wouldn't you say? <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, um, yeah. It would so be you... it would be so nice to just have that more happen more often in, in organizations. Is, is 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 there something that we can do from the developer side to make sure that these dialogues happen in our organization? Yeah, I mean that's. I think it's up to engineers at that point for sure. But if I am an engineer that who doesn't really know what to do to help my SEO in question, what would you say is a good icebreaker or a good door opener for me to become a better partner for the SEOs I'm working with? If I'm afraid um, of approaching you, kind of. Oh, gosh. Um. <laughs> I don't know. It sounds like you figured it out. So. <laughs> Not well, from my perspective, yeah, I'm not an engineer, so that one's a tough one to answer. I think maybe you kind of asked your own. Okay, then, then you know, yeah, then it's a good question you. for you. But okay. I mean, from my then perspective, then let me ask exactly your your perspective. Yeah. What would you love an engineer to come forward with to you? Yeah, I think I mean I'll give you my perspective, and then um, I'd love to hear yours on it. Is um, you know. From my perspective, when I come into a situation and I get to know the engineers that I'm working with, there's ones that are kind of like, I don't get it. I don't want to do it. Leave me alone. And I leave them alone. Right. And then and that's where maybe you can help answer that question. The other ones are, you know, every once in a while, there's somebody who just gets a passion for SEO with what they do. And they'll kind of, you know, become my ally and then do some of the changes that I've asked. And then they actually even asked me for the follow-up, like what were the results of this change we did three months ago? And I show them and they get excited and they share that out with their team and they want to do more, right? And they ask to be assigned to the SEO work. And so then we become this like, you know, synergistic. And there's quite a few of them I have at GitHub, which is really nice. Um, but there are some of them that I've asked them for help or asked them, like, had them look at something that I'm seeing and like, hey, can you help me problem solve? And they're like, well, let me give it to someone else. Like, I don't want right. anything to do with it. Yeah. So maybe right. you can help give yeah. insight into somebody who's just not I there. Think, I think I see where that's probably coming from. I can see two reasons where that comes from. The number one reason is probably that they work in some sort of process or or system that does not reward this kind of interaction or help. And that's an organizational issue, I would argue. So for instance, if you're doing Scrum and you're you have to do or you're committing to doing whatever is in the iteration, and um, then someone comes up and asks you for additional stuff that isn't in the plan, then you are basically overcommitting yourself because now I have to balance what I promised you with what I promised everyone else on the team, including the product owner and probably business stakeholders. And then it's like, ah, uh, and the easiest way to deal with that is because you didn't come in through the regular channel of where commitments come in through um, is to drop your request. Uh, that's the obvious thing because everything else has been committed. And now you're asking me to commit something uh, or to commit to some activity um, so I can deny that which would mean that you need to figure out uh, where in the process you can place this request so that it gets picked up by someone in the sprint. So that's one reason. The other reason that I could see uh, for this to happen is, and we come back to the I don't know, that they don't know why that would matter. There are a lot of developers who look very technocratically on their work. It's like, I measure myself by the features that I output. I measure myself by the, the systems that I build or by the systems that my code touches or something like that. Basically, they're looking only at what they can immediately see and touch, which is the code. Um, and they might not necessarily be aware that it isn't that much fun to work on something 
that no one ever uses because no one knows it exists and no one knows it exists because it can't be found where everyone looks for knowledge, which is search engines. So that's an approach that I have taken whenever I talk to SEOs, as uh, to developers. And I mean, I have been at lots of developer conferences and it's tricky to get them to listen to you when you are talking about SEO. Even as a developer, it is not necessarily trivial to get everyone in the room to listen instead of just reading something on their phone. Um, and the way that I have done this is like, look, you want to build stuff that has an impact, most likely a positive impact on someone else's life. And if that impact can be as big as it can be, that is great, right? You want to, you're not building software for the sake of building software. You're building software so that people can solve problems or fulfill needs with it. And if no one knows about your software, then why did you build it in the first place? And that, oftentimes hooks them in and then you can say like SEO gives us a tool or is a tool for us to bring people's attention to the things that you build. And I need a little bit of your time to make sure that this attention is given to your work. Sometimes that works. It doesn't always work, but I would say these two things would probably hook most of the developers to help you. That's I hope. interesting. So instead of leaving them alone, So how do you think that, I mean, an example of myself or other SEOs could be better partners for like those types of engineers or yeah. engineers um, in general? Th there are a few things. So definitely, I, I love that you said like, yes, I, I have been and we have in our organization, we have been doing this quadrant thing because that helps immensely. Because if I have to sort um, through lots of concurring items that all need my attention, I'm always obviously like... We are all human. We are not superhuman. No, none of us is a superhuman. Uh, we look for the high impact, low effort thing. And if that's something that you would like to get out of the way, then presenting me with this first is definitely a good chance for you to, for me to pick your thing up. Because, you know, I, I don't have to do that much, but someone out there will be very happy that I did it. And I can say like, I did this thing and I, my work here had impact. Um, so that's, that's helping and, and lots of SEOs, unfortunately don't do that. They come with a variety and not even like single items. They basically just come with a long list of stuff. And I have no way of ordering this list or figuring out how important any of the items really is. And then I'm like, why would I even like do more research on which of these things needs to get done first if they don't even do it, if they just throw me an un unordered list of stuff, I'd be like, can't be that important because if it would be important, they would be elaborating on this. Uh, so if you elaborate on it, that's amazing. Uh, also, at least I know lots of engineers um, that would love to be asked about stuff. So I, I know that engineers have a huge issue with people coming with solutions like, oh, you have to do this thing. Oh, can you please change change the the template so that it it goes straight to the right um, to the right URL instead of redirecting in between? And then I'm like, we're not even using templates. But thanks for your suggestion, right? It's it's just it's we we are prob it's true, isn't it? We yeah. engineers are problem solvers as much as as SEOs are problem solvers. So why don't we do the problem solving together? rather than SEOs who might not even know the platform or the this tech stack that they work with, going into details there and like making things up that they don't know about and then coming to me with a solution that is nonsensical in the circumstances that our product and our tech stack is in. Instead of that, just go like, hey, I noticed that we have this weird redirect thing here and I was wondering like, what would it take to fix it? And if they say like, oh, actually, that's just the, that's just the thing in the template. Can you tell me what the URL for this is? Oh yeah, the, the URL that it should be is this, but the URL that it actually goes to right now is this, which then redirects three times. And you're like, oh, okay. In that case, let me let me take that URL, put it in the template, I'll commit it. It's a one line change, maybe. And then um, the developer is happy because they accomplish something that you tell them, oh, that actually is great because this fixes, I don't know how many thousand links in one go or like redirects that are happening every month uh, in one go. Um, so they are happy, you are happy, everybody wins. 
So that's a, that's the thing that I think is very important to come with problems and find the solution together because developers a probably have better insight into what these solutions should look like and b also are interested in the solving of a problem not necessarily in just stamping out the solution right. does that make sense yeah and that, that totally makes sense and i think sometimes like i said earlier that the seos yeah. may think that they know what the solution is and yeah, yeah, like, you know, uh, hey, just fix this one link. It shouldn't be that big a deal. But maybe yeah. the template's more complex, right? And, and I understand really where that's coming from. It. But I understand yeah. where that's coming from. Because yeah. if you are under scrutiny, then you're like, I don't want myself to be vulnerable again to someone being like, you have no idea what this entails. Like, this is a lot of work or something. But you make yourself somewhat vulnerable by saying like, hey, I just noticed this problem. Could we work together on, solution, uh, on solving yeah. this? So I yeah. think, yeah, I think that would, um, yeah, if that's, if that's the key to working with engineers and getting them to be, so the ones that are quiet, I, that's what I need to do is just kind of like go to them and say, Hey, I see this thing. Can you help me solve it? Maybe that'll get them more interested. Also one more thing. Um, and I'm pretty sure this will get developers angry with me, but they got to be fine in the end. I promise developers you will be fine with this. Oftentimes, developers don't know if you're genuinely interested in what they are doing to solve a specific problem or if you're just like trying to be polite or something. So they might, when you ask them something, they might weasel out with a bit of jargon. Like, oh, you know, the, it has something to do with the routing. Don't be like, oh, yeah, the routing. Yeah, cool, cool. Because that will tell me that you weren't actually that interested because my answer was ridiculously unspecific and unhelpful, really. But it, it makes 90% of non-genuine conversations go away, which is great because then I can actually get stuff done. Um, but be, be, be asking questions. Like, con continue to ask questions. What do you mean with the routing? Like, how does it actually work? And then you might get lucky and they might be excited about telling you how that actually works. And then you understand more of the system. So similar problems in similar systems or other teams or other clients or future jobs, you now know at least how it worked in this one case. And that there's a good chance that the way that it worked there is the same that it works el elsewhere too. And then you might actually be able to help an engineer uh, also find the solution a little quicker. I still wouldn't come with a solution, but at least you understand a little better what the system looks like and how it actually works. And normally engineers are willing to tell you this. Yeah, and it's I think, gonna, so that gonna... brings it back to the, you know, in the beginning when I said that, you know, SEOs should be technical. Fair. Um, mm. Yeah, and you said, oh, engineers shouldn't, and I think, I'm a huge advocate. Anytime any SEO comes to me and says, I want to learn to do what you do. I mean, I work at the most technical company you can work at, right? And um, and I've been in many interviews with other corporations where I've been turned down because I'm not technical enough, believe it or not. And I think it's, it's a trend and more companies are expecting SEOs not just to know, you know, your keywords that you're targeting and how to target them and, and how to structure and whatever, but you really got to understand, um, and how, you know, like the conversation of with the engineer, when the engineer says, Oh, we can't do that, which I've been told many times. And I know enough now to where I can say, actually, I know you can. And if you can't, then I'll go ahead and write it for you. And that usually, I mean, that's kind of like challenging a little bit rather than working with them. Um, and a lot of times they go, Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, I'll take care of it because they don't want me writing in their code. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you convinced me there. You, you actually, yeah, it makes sense now that you say it because yeah. at first I was like, mm, but you know, you don't have to be that. But now yeah, you say, yeah, you're right. You're yeah. absolutely right. Yeah, and I think sense. having, I, I think what you're saying, like having that conversation and when the developer says, you know, it's a routing thing, you know, and the SEO says, oh, okay. And then it's all done, right? You know, ask the question, you know, so it's okay, you don't learn. Maybe you don't know enough to ask technical SEO now, but you, like you just said, have that conversation with the engineer. 
Yeah. Learn a little bit more. And then the next time you're in that situation, you know, you may get to a point where you'd be like, well, I'll just do this for you if you're not going to do it. (laughs) And and being vulnerable and saying like, I don't know, is A, relatable for engineers and B, it also makes you more trustworthy. Yeah. Because as, as developers, we are relatively good at finding out things or like running experiments to test hypotheses. So if you present me with something that contradicts my intuition, I'll run an experiment and I'll find out you lied to me. And that's definitely not a trust booster. Yeah. So why not do this learning together? As you say, test and learn. I love that so much. I think that's one of the key phases in our conversation today was like test and learn. Always test and learn. Yeah. Beautifully simple and yet rarely done. Yeah. I mean, it's the, it's the GitHub culture, which is why I love being here. Right. I mean, we're a culture of engineers at the heart of it and everything we do, it's, you know, just break things, just push it out. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Go on and and do the next thing. You know, nobody makes mistakes because we're all just learning, right? So it's, um, I think other companies should adopt that culture. And I think what you said earlier too, you know, it's engineers are in this, you know, it's the culture and a lot of time organizations kind of put engineers on the spot and to where they can't feel that they can, you know, work with SEOs. And so... Yeah. Breaking that barrier is the thing that both sides have to do and have to want, I guess. Yeah, for sure. But we share so much. We share this culture of test and learn. We share the fact that we are working with things that we don't necessarily always know every single detail about. So why not work together? Yeah. Well, we live in a world now where the engineering process is so much faster, too. I mean, with you know, GitHub and development operations working in an automated way, right? Like, I mean, Google now pumps out updates, what, every minute? <laughs> often, <laughs> where you, quite often. Yeah, quite often where you guys in the past, you know, Google would update, there'd be a big rollout when, you know, you're doing waterfall, right? So we live in a world mm-hmm. where things can happen very quickly and there's no Everything reason why. Everything is a lot more agile, yeah. Yeah, much more agile, for sure. <laughs> well, <laughs> no better or intended. worse. But yeah, I, I think it, it makes it makes sense to just... I think if I were to take some bits and pieces away from this conversation for the developer side of things... Be okay with SEOs not knowing everything. Invite them in as much as they might invite you in to test and learn together. And again, this phrase is just beautifully simple. And uh, like, don't don't get hung up on like specific myths or buff, buzzwords. Just work together, test things out, try things out, and and have this conversation. I think that's the key, really. Yeah. Yeah, and I think what I learned is, you know, don't just leave those engineers that aren't interested alone. Like, try to have those conversations and and try to get them invited in, and and don't just go to them and tell them what to do. I think, yeah, like I've already solved it. I already know what to do. Um, but yeah, just have. I mean, if you already know what to do, just go to them and say, hey, look, I'm seeing this thing. What do you think? I mean, this is what I'm thinking might be the solution. You know. What do you think? Or what do you think the solution is and see if they have the same Also allows the the developers to learn themselves because next time you might not even have to go to them and tell them about it because they spot it in the development process. If if they know like, oh, so that's a problem. Oh, that's something that we need to avoid. Nice. And then they might actually factor that in the next time they build something like that. Yeah, I like that. It's a win-win. That's my, I have four pillars and one of them is mitigation. And that's the technical SEO is to get to a point where companies and with the engineering teams are actually not you know like releasing stuff without without all those three you know redirects or those you know the 301s the 302s or the redirect chains like the code is they're actually looking for seo fixes before they're launching anything and then you don't even really have to do anything as an seo Mm. but yeah what are the other three pillars so we have mitigation um, I shouldn't brought it up. Uh, <laughs> you you brought <laughs> this up on yourself now. Yeah, so mitigation is one, and that's the technical SEO. One is partnerships or relationships with others across the organization, and that includes engineering, of course. Um, but it's also, like I said, other teams. You're under scrutiny, right? 
Um, another one is, ta oh, sorry. Um, another one is analytics. So always being able to measure everything you do. And I think that helps with a lot of the relationship building too, right? Like if you launch something, you should be able to say, you know, what is my- successful or not. Yeah, what's, what, what's before you launch it, what do you think your impact's gonna be? And, and you can say it in ranking position or you can say it in number of impressions or you can say it in, you know, more eyes on the page or click through rate, however it is, but you should always be able to measure it and, you know, know what it is before you launch and then also be able to report on it what it, what it was afterwards. Um, and then you know, the last one is um, like product management sort of, so launching projects. You know, as SEOs, we get lumped in this, like constantly working with other teams to support them, but there's also a place where we could actually build our own content. So we could work with content teams and we can build pages. Um, I always end up, or companies always end up calling my pages SEO pages. <laughs> um, yeah, Groupon has them. If it works, it works. Nordstrom has them. <laughs> yeah, everybody has them. It works, them. it works. And um, I know, I, yeah. I think I remember them as marketing pages, but in reality, oftentimes they were SEO pages. Yeah, they're yeah. just SEO pages, which yeah. I kind of, you know, it's got a stigma to it because I don't want come you know i don't want organizations thinking that we're creating pages just for seo we're actually yeah, creating yeah, pages exactly. for the users you know at the end of the day otherwise yeah. they won't show up right so yeah, that's true. um really if the nice. org wants to call them that that's fine but mm -hmm. they're user pages as far as i'm concerned fair but, enough fair yeah enough. but <laughs> thanks a lot for sharing the four pillars that was yeah. awesome yeah oh my god i learned so much today i and it was fun too I, <laughs> thank you so so much for joining and thanks a lot for the conversation this was awesome i hope that you enjoyed it as much as i did yes i did yeah i think i learned a lot too i have some takeaways and i'm going to go talk to those engineers i don't usually talk to <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing okay in that case uh, i do hope that our audience enjoyed it as much and took away some bits and pieces too and uh yeah thanks a lot and thanks for watching and um uh, Hope to see you all, including you, Jen, soon again, hopefully in person at some conference or somewhere, and maybe, who knows, with like wild hair again. Yeah, we you might have know. to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thanks a lot. Have a great time and bye-bye. Bye. Thanks, Martin.